The Department of Justice indicted the creators of an application that helps people spend their bitcoins anonymously. They're accused of conspiracy to commit money laundering. Why conspiracy to commit as opposed to just money laundering? Because they didn't hold anyone else's money or do anything illegal with it. They provided a privacy tool that may have enabled other people to do illegal things with their Bitcoin, but that's not a crime, just as selling someone a kitchen knife isn't a crime. The case against the creators of Samurai Wallet is an assault on our civil liberties and First Amendment rights. What this tool does is offer what's known as a coin join, a method for anonymizing Bitcoin transactions by mixing them with other transactions, as the project's founder, Kion Rodriguez, explained to Reason in 2022. I think the best analogy for it is like smelting gold. You take your Bitcoin, you add it into Whirlpool, and Whirlpool smelts it into new pieces that are not associated to the original piece. Smelting bars of gold would make it harder for the government to track, but if someone eventually uses a piece of that gold for an illegal purchase, should the creator of the smelting furnace go to prison? This is what the government is arguing. But all technologies have had bad effects. The telephones allow extortion, death threats, bomb threats, kidnapping cases. Uncontrolled publishing of books could allow satanic books to appear. Cash is the payment technology used by most criminals, but it also happens to be essential for preserving the financial privacy of law-abiding citizens, as Human Rights Foundation Chief Strategy Officer Alex Gladstein told Reason. The ATM model, it gives people the option to have freedom money. Yes, the government will know all the ins and outs of what the flows are coming in and out, but they won't know what you do with it when you leave. And that, that allows us to preserve the privacy of cash, which I think is essential for democratic society. The government's decision to indict Rodriguez and his partner, William Lonergan Hill, is also an attack on free speech, because all they did was write open source code and make it widely available. Attorney Jerry Brito, who heads up the cryptocurrency nonprofit Coin Center, put it this way after the US Treasury went after the creators of another piece of anonymizing software called Tornado Cash. It is indicia of a chilling effect on free speech, so basically, Anybody who is in any way associated with this tool, which again is a neutral tool that can be used for good or for ill, these people are now being um, basically deplatformed in such a way that they don't have an ability to speak and may in the future not choose to speak. Are we willing to trade away our constitutional rights for the promise of security? For many in power, there seems to be no limit to what they want us to trade away. Crypto puts the system at the whims of some shadowy, faceless group of super coders and miners. In the 90s, the FBI tried to ban online encryption because criminals and terrorists might use it to have secret conversations. Had they succeeded, there would be no internet privacy. E-commerce, which relies on securely sending credit card information, might never have existed. Today, Elizabeth Warren mobilizes her anti-crypto army to take down Bitcoin by exaggerating its utility to Hamas. The Biden administration tried to permanently record all transactions over 600 bucks, and Warren hopes to implement a central bank digital currency which would allow the government near total surveillance of our financial lives. Remember when the Canadian government ordered banks to freeze money headed to the trucker protests? Central bank digital currencies would make such efforts far easier. The central bank has determined your digital dollar is no longer spendable. So we come from first principles here in the global struggle for human rights. The most important thing is that it's confiscation resistant and censorship resistant and parallel and can be done outside of the government's control. The most important thing about Bitcoin and money like it isn't its price. It's the check it places on the government's ability to devalue, censor and surveil our money. Creators of open source tools like Samurai Wallet should be celebrated, not threatened with a quarter century in federal prison.